Welcome to Dead on the Bay. Eye on the Bay, actually. And we are celebrating Dead Bay Area. But don't flip the dial, don't change the channel, because actually this is a celebration of some of the life of the past in the Bay Area. For example... We're going to come see Joe DiMaggio, baseball great, the Yankee Clipper. Bay Area cemeteries are a veritable who's who. Like James A. Folger, you know, the coffee guy. And this is the William Randolph Hearst uh, mausoleum. This is the resting place of Wyatt and Josie Earp. We'll dig up fascinating stories about San Francisco's past and show you how we were literally built upon the shoulders of our forefathers. In fact, you may be standing on one of them right now. Bodies, human remains, they're uh, still out there. And welcome to Coma, the only city in the world specifically built for the dearly departed. How many people live in Colma? We have approximately 1,675 people above ground. But it's still the largest city in the Bay Area. But we have a million and a half wonderful underground residents. Now, most of the cemeteries we'll visit are traditional ones, like the Mountain View Cemetery here in Oakland. You know, it's got headstones and inscriptions, fairly easy to find anybody that you feel like visiting. But we're going to begin with a cemetery in Marin County that has new ideas about a very old-fashioned thing to do. We recycle bottles, we recycle cans. Next, we'll be recycling you, and with good reason. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Conventional caskets consume 30 million board feet of lumber every year, enough to build about 3,000 houses. There's as much steel buried in cemeteries annually as was used in the construction of the Golden Gate Bridge. But there's one cemetery that tries to make sure that you don't take it with you when you go. It's Fernwood. Uh, our real focus is on green burial or natural burial. It begins with the box you're buried in. In most cemeteries, you're required to have a grave liner or a vault, which is typically a concrete box that goes inside the ground, and then the casket is placed inside of that. Oftentimes, the caskets are steel or they're exotic hardwood. So they're using up a lot of resources. They're using up a lot of resources. Not a very large turnout, is it? Uh, most of the time, people are embalmed. So you're putting a lot of formaldehyde into the ground. So we're not doing any of that. So this really is back to the idea of ashes to ashes. Yeah, exactly. Fernwood is a Mill Valley cemetery that dates back to the 1890s. Part of it looks like a conventional burial ground. Old graves marked with old headstones. But the green part is green. The ceremony is simple. The casket is often a highly biodegradable pine box, and the only headstones are stones. So instead of a cemetery that looks like this, it looks like this. Do people always want to know where their loved ones are buried? Not always. Really? Some people really just want to know that their loved one is somewhere in this space. It's communicating with the dead. Right, <laughs> exactly. This ungainly device can detect RFID tags, the same tags Fast Track uses to keep track of cars are buried with the dearly departed at Fernwood. So it's detected the radio frequency ID tag. Right. Now okay. it's looking through your database. And it's finding out who that is. Fernwood also uses GPS to locate unmarked graves. Well, it is beautiful, but you really wouldn't know you're walking in the middle of a cemetery. Correct. What kind of person decides to be buried in this fashion? Um, most often it's people who are concerned about the environment. And if that's you, Fernwood would be happy to be the last people on Earth to let you down. In many ways, cemeteries are a celebration of life, not death. Take, for example, Malloy's Tavern in Colma. Just across the street from Holy Cross Cemetery, this local watering hole is where people send off beloved spirits by imbibing in spirits. People mourn here, and they celebrate here. It's also a hangout for the people who are the last ones on Earth to let you down. Cemetery workers. And there are a lot of those in Colma, as correspondent Dave Stelk explains.
We are very unique. We are the only city in the world, as far as I know, that was incorporated to preserve and protect its dead. This is our cemetery room. Just a stone's throw from headstones is the Colma History Museum, where President Pat Hatfield safe keeps the city's underground legacy. How many people live in Colma? We have approximately 1,675 people above ground, but we have a million and a half wonderful underground residents. Colma is famous for its cemeteries. The city of Colma, absolutely. 17 cemeteries. We have four Jewish cemeteries, a Greek cemetery, we have a Serbian cemetery, we have a Japanese cemetery, an Italian cemetery, uh, we have several Chinese cemeteries, a pet cemetery. So we have a little bit of everything here. So there are 1.5 million people buried in Colma. There are. This is the first, though. This is where Timothy Buckley was buried. And that was in June of 1887. Mr. Buckley was the first to come and not live in Colma, but like most of Colma's residents, he came from the much larger city of San Francisco, just a few miles north, where there aren't many cemeteries. But that wasn't always the case. There were 27 cemeteries in San Francisco. This is a ledger that was made in the 19-teens. Mission San Francisco de Assisi Dolores, where the whites first settled, and fittingly, as historian Andrew Galvan explains, here is where the first ones are buried. That shows us a plot map of our Mission Dolores Cemetery. And just as soon as people started living in San Francisco, they started dying in San Francisco. And they kept on dying. During the gold rush, you had hundreds of thousands of people that came here, and unfortunately, they brought diseases with them, and so many people uh, died. Just one problem. In San Francisco, they needed to grow. Cemeteries took up valuable real estate. So San Francisco passed a law in 1900. The law provided the removal of the grave markers. But not what the markers marked. Bodies, human remains, they're right. still out there. San Francisco was literally built upon the shoulders of its forefathers. Then City Hall said, listen, except for Mission Dolores and the Army's Presidio, no more cemeteries, period. And let's move all those bodies to coma. So the town's founders said, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Oh, but they don't necessarily have to be breathing. So coma was invented to take the dead. Yes, it was. It took decades to move all the bodies, and new graves are still being dug. Only a tiny fraction of Colma's population lives here. If you don't mind, let me check your pulse. <laughs> it's there, it's there. This is a who's who of San Francisco and California. San Francisco's history is buried in Colma. Gene giant Levi Strauss rests in one of Colma's Jewish cemeteries. Well, this is Joshua Norton. Margaret Hambrick, general manager of Woodlawn Memorial Park, directs visitors to San Francisco's most eccentric, eccentric. Josh Norton declared himself king. He's probably one of our most famous uh, residents here at Woodlawn. This is patterned after the Temple of Athena. Ken Varner is president of Cypress Lawn Cemetery, where here lies Citizen Kane. The William Randolph Hearst Mausoleum. Colma is home to some of the most famous people in Earth. We're going to come see Joe DiMaggio, baseball great, the Yankee Clipper. Jolton Joe is the most popular resident where Monica Williams works at Holy Cross Cemetery. We've had people come out from New York and say, I'm here from New York. I have to go see Joe DiMaggio. Visitors look down on people they look up to. Do you kind of brag with the other cemeteries? We have so-and-so. Oh, absolutely. This is the resting place of Wyatt and Josie Earp. Steve Weiner caretakes what is considered the most visited grave in all of Northern California. We have pre-printed maps in the office. Wyatt Earp. People leave money, poker chips, uh, bullets, sometimes uh, uh, marijuana butts, and uh, oftentimes they are uh, so surprised to find out that he's in a Jewish cemetery. For the record, the Old West gunslinger wasn't Jewish, his wife was.
out of coma. I love it. The town's motto? It's great to be alive in coma. It's a nice, quiet neighborhood. What can you say? The burial business isn't the only game in town. Coma also has a blooming industry in flowers. As you head down to El Camino Real, sometimes you've just got to stop and smell the roses. After all, what's a funeral without flowers? And as you can imagine, Coma also has a solid headstone industry. Coming up as I in the Bay's dead Bay Area continues, what's the story behind a giant batch of headstones featuring clowns? Plus, where is the Bay Area cemetery with the best view? And the place where one's life story is summed up in a tiny little box?